Russia will try to find some countermeasures, but it will be very um, ridiculous if they uh, will target Lithuania, but not European Commission. Give us your reaction then to what the Lithuanian Prime Minister has said about um, these claims as being a lie. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, the position of Lithuania is very simple and clear. Uh, it is not the decision of Lithuanian government. Uh, it is not really the decision of Lithuanian parliament. It is the decision of the European Commission uh, that was announced three months ago on March 15th. And uh, the Russian government was uh, very well aware of this. So it's not a complete blockade. It's not, it, uh, this decision does not mean that no goods can be transferred uh, via Lithuania to Kaliningrad region but only those uh, products that are listed in the uh, decision of the European Commission. So that's, that's very simple and very straight. So it's not a complete blockade and it's not de definitely the decision of Lithuania. So what is the Kremlin reaction, though, to what she's saying? Uh, Kremlin... Um, <clears throat> the, the position of the Kremlin in this, those situations is uh, do not hear what the other side is saying, but to continue to promote your narrative. And the, the narrative of the Kremlin is, okay, it's a Lithuanian decision, a Lithuanian bl uh, installed blockade of Kaliningrad, and we should make some decisions, uh, countermeasures uh, to, make, uh, to punish Lithuanian people and the government of Lithuania. But could you just explain, um, Kaliningrad is, is essentially entirely separate for, it's, uh, from Russia. It's, it's a Russian territory, but entirely separate from Russia. Yes, correct. It is uh, the region of Russia between, that is uh, located between Poland and Lithuania. Kaliningrad is a former German uh, city of Königsberg. And the Russia, the Soviet Union received this area in 1945 under Yalta and Potsdam Agreement. Uh, uh, there is a connection with Russia by airplanes, of course, and the airspace uh, is not closed for Russian planes. And there is a connection by Baltic Sea, so ships, uh, car cargo ships can deliver uh, any goods, including those that are under EU sanctions to Kaliningrad. So that's why it is a very strategic, it's a very important area for President Putin. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is very important because uh, this, uh, this decision uh, is a significant blow, not all, uh, mainly for the, uh, this area, because uh, there are a couple of uh, very important uh, enterprises located there which produce uh, uh, trucks and uh, uh, some spare parts for the trucks. And uh, according to the decision of the EU, uh, those companies from Kaliningrad will not be able to deliver goods to the mainland Russia. And on the other hand, Kaliningrad, uh, usually, it's not okay, it receives many of building materials like cement, like uh, uh, oil products, like steel products uh, for the construction. Uh, from mainland Russia. And of course, it creates uh, a lot of problems for the uh, local economy. So, so could you explain then how, how much goods did Russia say that um, Lith um, Lithuania have, have blocked then? And are they, it relates to the goods and the, that you've just been describing. Uh, the full list of the goods uh, that will be Band to transfer uh, by Lithuanian territories is uh, written on the 49 pages of the European Commission, Commission decision, mm -hmm. but it includes uh, uh, starting from iron ore, steel, steel products, uh, coal from the beginning of August, oil and refined oil products from the beginning of December, but as well, uh, some uh, luxury goods, uh, some uh, precious goods, uh, some uh, uh, cement, like, like I said. So it's a big, big, big list of goods. Yeah. So um, very importantly, what do you think is going to happen in the next days and weeks with this situation? Do you think that tensions could escalate and we could see some, the situation worsening? Uh I think Russia will try to find some countermeasures, but it will be very um, ridiculous if they uh, will target Lithuania, but not European Commission. Yeah, because definitely Lithuania cannot unilaterally 
uh, eliminate this ban and the Lithuania cannot make a decision to allow Russian goods to go uh, to Kaliningrad and back. So it's not an easy, it's not an easy choice and uh, it's not an easy situation because Lithuania had, uh, has very few economic relations with uh, Russia and it, is, it has built an economy that, to a great extent, is not connected with Russian business, with the Russian economy. So it's, it was more dependent on Belarus uh, import, exporting uh, via its seaports uh, products uh, produced in Belarus. So I uh, honestly, I even cannot imagine what could be done, but... Uh, it would not be. Uh, it would be a great surprise if Kremlin will not answer to this decision. But when you say uh, they, if it would be wrong or it wouldn't be the move they would take to target Lithuania or to um, escalate tensions with Lithuania without doing so with the European Union, I mean, what does that look like then? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, don't, I, cannot ima- I cannot imagine how Russia got maybe some uh, uh, individual sanctions against uh, Lithuanian politicians, maybe, or something like that. And, and can Lithuania look to its NATO allies if the situation does escalate and we do see tensions looking uh, precarious? Uh, as, as, as we know, Lithuania is a member of NATO, and there are uh, some troops, uh, some, some German troops located in this country. And definitely Lithuania is under uh, Article 5 of NATO uh, status here, yeah, that one for all and all for one. And uh, I, I doubt that Russia will look for a military invasion. Yes, exactly. So Lithuania can uh, rely on the support of its NATO allies in this situation, or it can at least uh, gain um, a feeling of comfort and security from the fact that it's part of NATO where this is all concerned. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Lithuania uh, will rely and is rely, and that was the most uh, important why Lithuania and other Baltic countries joined NATO before. Uh, well, it's a, a fascinating situation. We'll see how it unfolds, but really interesting hearing your take on it. Um, as always, Sergei Alekseshenko, former deputy minister under Russian President Boris Yeltsin. 